so welcome back to I guess this will probably be the the most serious episode of the weigh-in that we've we've ever done because this is definitely a serious subject. Um, I agree. Uh, so I can't say for sure if there's going to be jokes. Sometimes I throw jokes out just to you know bring the levity. I don't know if I'm going to do this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the legacy of 9/11, and let me get specific. We're talking about the September 11th attacks, you know, that has earned the moniker 9-11. So it was a Tuesday morning, September 11th, 2001, you know, the attacks occurred. And um, obviously it was devastating, you know. Uh, you know, 17 years ago, World Trade Center got taken down. Um, Al-Qaeda was the perpetrators. Yep. Uh a lot of death and uh I guess we should just I guess we should just go right in. Now, first thing I want to say is cuz this comes up in a lot of books and they talk when I when I read books on memory and they always say like episodic memory holds better than semantic memory. Sure. So, you know, what you experience is going to hold better than what you just take for real. Do you remember exactly where you were 9/11? Yeah, that's uh, that's where I do actually and, and uh, I was going to begin at that point because you brought it up. Uh and it was summertime. I was working in my garage at home. I was just getting some stuff ready to before I go to work. I usually try to knock a couple hours out in the morning. I got the radio on, listen to uh, updates of sports or you know, baseball scores. And um, uh, I think it was a, it was a Buffalo radio station. And the DJ announced that um, a special bulletin that a small prop plane or something hit one of the, the towers in New York City. And they said that more information will be available as they hear about it. But we repeat again, it's a small prop plane. You know, you think it's like one of those little jumper ones that you see fly over. So I'm in the garage. I'm working a little bit later. My son is so you So you only heard audio. Audio. So you didn't even see actual visuals yet. Well, the second one I did because what happened was... Um, I decided after about 15, 20 minutes to go check it out just for the heck of it because I figured it's got to be a stunning uh, imagery if they captured it. So your uh, your photographer, your uh, director side came out. Yeah, so my son was home at the time. He was off during the summer. He was, you know, he's only like eight. He's only like, you know, 20 years old at the time. Shit. Yeah, Junior was young at the time. No, he was like uh, 18 or 17, actually. So uh, while I'm inside, I went like, wow, this is really crazy. And, uh, and I said, like, now we realize it wasn't a Piper plane. It was, a, you know, a full-size jet. And as the guy is talking live, what circles around the other tower that's not hit yet is... Another plane is circling around. The deed, the the anchor is talking to me. The jet's behind him, flying around. You seen that live? Yeah, we saw that live. Wow! And the lady, the people filming it, the host, the the, the the camera people, they're watching it live, and, and and everybody's like, must be doing all this, you know, stuff behind the, the camera. And he's going, uh, I I think something has just happened. He kind of turns around. It's in frame. There it is. It hits. It's already hit now, right? Wow! And I, I ran in. I, I ran in. I said. Junior, you gotta wake up. That's astonishing. That's and, that's mind blowing. Yeah. And that's then heavy. minutes later, all of a sudden, there's a tag. The, the, the Pentagon got hit. There's another yeah. plane in the air. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. <clears throat> Everything started getting shut down. I woke my son. Wow. I said, "You've never seen this before. I think we're under attack from a foreign entity." I was thinking it was like you know something more than Al Qaeda, you know, or whatever it was. But uh, it sure looked like it was, and that was my experience. And, you know, the world has never been the same. Our country has never been the same ever since then. Well, yeah. How about you? What was your uh, So I remember, I remember exactly where I was at. I was living with this cat. Um, he, was a, he was a mutual friend. We used to call him G-Mac. Grown man, ain't you? That's another story for another day. But so it's me and G-Mac. He may get referred to as G-Man, so whatever. So I'm, I'm sleeping. He wakes me up. He's like, he's like he called me Q because that was my nickname at the time. He's like, Q, man, you got to wake up, man. You got to see what's on TV right now. So I'm like, dude, what the fuck you waking me up? I'm kind of <laughs> chilling, man. You know, I got to go to work later. So he shows me the TV, which at this time, both planes have already hit. So now I'm like, you got a TV in your room? No, 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 no. I went out to the, I was okay. in my room. He called me out. All right. You know, so we're, you know, I'm, I'm watching the film and I'm like, What's going on? And I'm and I'm reading the banner headline, and it says, you know, U.S. under attack, and like, it was just, it so was a, I was, it was a sense of awe, and like anybody that knows me knows, like I'm not a guy that really gets scared. Like I handle crisis very well, but like, I will admit I wasn't scared, but I was definitely shook eternally. 
Because I, I, I didn't my, know world. Because I didn't know how far reaching this was gonna be. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think you anybody know, like, expected it. They're showing New York. They're showing DC, and I'm like, planes. This is like jets. This, like yeah, this is Stuck in, with fuel. this is an insane level of evil and devastation that's being brought upon the nation. And at the time that I had never known anything, this is shit we would read about in books. Well, we read about Pearl Harbor. We read about that one. And yeah. Everything. This was like that, you know, in many ways. The last yeah. time I experienced that was when uh, all the when Jimmy Carter was the president and it was the failed attempt to rescue the hostages out of Iran. The helicopters exploded. The, the rescue mission was a failure. The hostages didn't get out. That was pretty groundbreaking for the world. That brought in the Ronald Reagan era, obviously. But um, I, I, I'm sorry if I interrupted you, bro. No, no, no. Um, and... Being a, I was always like a complex thinker, so I'm like, is this going on around the world? Who is it? Like, I wanted the I information. Like, yeah. I needed, I needed the data. I needed to start processing so I can figure this shit out, you know. And I'm like, I need to call my parents. Yeah. I need to call my girlfriend. Like, I like, I need to make sure people are safe. Like, that's when. Yeah. What, what if there was like a nuclear strike yeah, coming next or something? That's when whatever level of panic that I can feel like really crept in. Like after I watched it. Like, after I watched it for about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, so now my mind is racing. Like, yeah. and I will never forget that day. Like, I remember the sunlight coming into the room. Yeah, it was a sunny I day. Yeah, I remember what I had. On. Like, it was a beautiful fucking day. Yeah, it was. And, like, and, I and remember. too. <laughs> I remember going to work that day, and, like, it was silence. There were people shopping, but it was utter silence. It was like we were at a funeral. Like, it was unbelievable. It was numbing. Yeah. And, like, nobody understood. So, that's that's 9-11. That's, that's 9-11. Yeah. So, the well, legacy the legacy of 9-11. Yeah. Now, obviously, we're Bush era. Sure. You know. And now we're going to war. So, that war was the longest war that the U.S. has ever been involved in ever and it's not over because they're still and in it, pakistan and, 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 it, and it's and it's not over yeah we like we invaded like so 2011 so that's that's 18 we're 2019 so that's coming on you know 18 years that's the longest we've ever been in war that's the longest like we've ever funded a war machine so one of the big things that i noticed initially was xenophobia yeah like the muslims were now under attack because once we figured out it was al-qaeda it was Taliban. Once we started putting those, connecting those dots, now it's like, can you trust your your brother? You know, can you trust a guy? Yeah. That, you know, whatever, whatever the Muslims were doing at the time, as far as whatever different vocations that they had, you know. So I'm just like, I'm just throwing it out there. Like maybe they were cab drivers. Maybe they owned delicatessens. Like. You know, maybe they... They went to like, lockdown maybe, mode. Yeah, maybe they had regular jobs, and, you know, they went to the mosque, and they yeah. came back, like, they were attacked, and, like, nobody knew, because, like, you started to find out, like, the people who were orchestrating this were, like, people who had assimilated into the culture, and, they, you know, to do these suicide bombings. Yeah, I mean, my God. I mean, all the airplanes were shut down. They realized it all came they, from, uh, they learned how to fly, you know. Yeah, they shut down all air traffic. All traffic. They, they scrambled um, the bombers, jets, and everything. Yeah. Right. Um, it's crazy. American Muslims, the people who've been here for decades, uh, went into lockdown mode. They were frightened because they, yeah. they had an idea. They were going to be the first pe people pointed at it. Targeted. No, and, absolutely. And it was. It was and, it, you know? and it was, it was no way to diagnose or delineate like who was friend and who was foe so like you know the immediate reaction because and i was like you just got punched in the face if you're american you just got punched in the face sucker punch so, so sucker punch too so you got a, a index of americans who now want to fight back so now you've you've coalesced the nation in a sense because that is the first time i remember where it was solid. It was great solidarity within the nation yeah it was you know like you didn't hear a lot from Bigotist, racist, prejudiced people, they still harbored their ideas, but now they were like, you know, there is a foreign entity. Now it's time to fight whoever's coming. Well, some of the things that are definitely related to the legacy would be that exactly what you're saying, if I can uh, work off of that. Because <clears throat> we started to uh, draw sides, we started to point fingers at people. Uh, we went into different modes. We had uh, we had a color system in place, and the TV would go red if it was a, a dangerous warning. I mean, we were we were spooked. We didn't know how to deal with this stuff. We were we were probably a little laid back. We were we were you know we didn't take things as serious as we should have. I think we 
we kind of knew there was going to be an attack. They said they didn't know it was going to be that big or how, how well orchestrated it was going to be. But a lot of things that happened was it definitely um, it definitely gave the um, uh, the mechanism of the um, uh, the the Grumman airplane companies, all the people that make the bombers and all the war machine. The war machine got geared up for. A, even more business than they already they already have, and and that hasn't sold out since then, because everybody's thinking that you know we're going to have to have a, this giant war again, similar to like you know World War Two style. Think, we're never going to fight like that again. Yeah, though. think about how it infiltrated movies. Movies, oh yeah. Terrorist cells. The word terrorist was never that popular, or I don't believe it was ever that popular as it is in the United States after nine eleven. Like never. The like the idea that we could be attacked, you know, like. People started learning more about government agencies like CIA, FBI. Um, the idea that we'd have to go to foreign soil, put boots on the fucking ground, and attack, you know. You know, like, we, we had never been in a war. Like, it is, you know, we had never been in a war. We had never been attacked. And, like, now we have, like, a legitimate threat. And these people were making videos. They wanted to kill us. Oh, they tell the clue. The clue did that. that Patriot first, Act. Yeah, the, yeah. the surveillance, like this, everything that surveillance now, like was kind of birthed, you know, yeah. and popularized, you know, not to pol politicize this too much, but popularized by nine eleven. Well, it still is a legacy, even though we're, you know, we're not trying to purposely politicize the situation, but here we are in twenty nineteen, and we're clearly, uh, you know, uh, people of color and Muslims are still, uh, you know, uh, not 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 a Black Americans necessarily, but um, they they still obviously are being. Uh, subjugated in some ways, but uh, uh, I think uh, it's a legacy, and it's not the world's greatest legacy. It's made us smarter and more aware of things. But I think we're, we're even, just uh, we're we're, ner we're we're finger we're trigger happy. We we're, we don't trust anybody. It's cr this era is it's not fun, and it really kind of spun from the 9-11 era. Like even think about like trying to board a plane now. Oh yeah, TSA is up your ass. They're in your fucking DNA, trying to like get your ancestry. Like they're not gonna let you aboard the plane without you, without making sure like you know all the proper uh, protocols like have been ran through. We uh, you know, like the a lot of the government systems that are in place now. You know, like watch list. I never knew anything about a fucking watch list, but you can't Google certain things now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like there's a fucking watch list now. You know, there it's an algorithm. This guy may be a fucking terrorist. Like, it's insane. Like, it's insane. This one act of inhuman cruelty totally changed the direction of the United States of America. It, it's, it's unnerving how one, one thing, like, one action like this could, you know, have so much... Yeah, well, you know, you know, remember what happened to the president? He was down in Florida at the time, and he, when he was in Florida, um, he got the, somebody whispered in his ear. He was talking to some young kids, and they said, "Look, it, look, we just got we just got attacked, and uh, how are we going to deal with this and whatnot?" And he sat in that chair for about five minutes and just stared off aimlessly. It's like I, he never expected that this would happen on his watch or to this extent. And I always felt that was chilling. I don't know if you remember that footage. Uh, I do remember that. He came back to New York and he was hell bent for to attack. You know, in an odd way, part of who the, do we have? Giuliani. Giuliani was the mayor. Okay. The Yankees. Uh, the, the Yankees. They looked upon the Yankees. There was a lot of the, the, the firemen all died. And it's oh yeah. And everything wow. That took the place, first you know? the first responders. Yeah. A lot of a lot of good fire. My father was a firefighter, so a lot of good firefighters died. No, my father didn't die in 9/11. Um. He wasn't active, but like, yeah. Um, rest in peace to everybody who uh, who died in 9/11. Oh, you know, trying doubt. to. Uh, I heard I heard the other day that the uh, the special fund that was put together, and this is part of the legacy also, to help uh, re you know help out some of the people with bills and give people some uh, settlements on uh, the you know the, the poisons and the stuff they had to inhale. That, yeah. that dies out in 2020, and there'll be no more money left. And oh they wow! Said, yeah, and here's here's the weird thing about it: when they wrote when they set this uh, this fund up, it was real real large. And uh, but what happened is here we are 17 years later, and the person the spokesman for uh, you know the firemen or whatever the, the groups of people that are in litigation, they were saying like, there's no way that this can really end. There can't be an end date on it. He says because all the cancers and all the things that people have, uh, there's no time factor on when that occurs. So people are still getting sick right now from it. Yes. And the first generations all died already. A lot of those people already got cancer and died. Yeah, because there was a lot of carcinogens, in a lot air, of yeah. things in the air. Yeah, I so never thought about that. In some that. ways, I think uh, that's probably going to have to be left a little bit more like an open-door policy. It's going to cost us trillions of dollars. 
You know, um, so that that's a that's a that's a very hard hard, hard to digest. Now, can I legacy? Now, can I ask you a question? Being sure. the everyday man on the street like I am, do you think there will be a part two? Like, do you think that they will try to attack again, and will they succeed? Uh, I don't think they're gonna. I think there will be another attack of some nature, but it won't be as uh, simple. Now I'm going to call it simple. It won't be as simple as the tower attacks because now with uh, Russia selling bombs to enemies and nuclear bombs are talked about a lot more, and we got the problems with North Korea. Even though the president, the current president, you know, thinks he's a good guy and this and that, we have more threats of nuclear uh, uh, war than we've ever had since the uh, Russian, you know, when Russia was around, you know just as the Cold War came to end. So if it happens in the future, I don't know if we're going to get attacked here, but somebody's going to drop a nuclear bomb on one of our allies, and that's going to cause a bigger war. Now, uh, I'm not... You try us, too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a xenophobe, and I'm also not an apologist. So I guess I'll fall somewhere, you know, asymmetrically in the middle of this thing. So, so you think it could happen, but you're, you're optimistic maybe it won't? I'm optimistic that it won't. But I'm not a Pollyanna. I, I I do understand that the probability of it happening again could be high, you know, because we're never going to decimate these people. Like, we've been fighting these people for, like, you know, the last decade, maybe, you know, over a decade. And, you know, to us, it's war. To them, it's like a fucking Thursday. Like, you know, this is this is their life. So, yeah. I don't know. Obviously, 9-11 has left a long legacy and, it, you know, will we'll endure over time. Yeah. Another day at the weigh-in. <laughs> mm. good a good day at work. Even yeah. though the evening. All right, take it easy, brother. Take it easy. Over and out.